Hi friends, my name is Chris Leyenbauer and I'm with PhaseDoc. This is the first in a five-part series of videos on industrial automation using an Arduino. I first gave this presentation at the 2019 Bay Area Maker Fair in San Mateo. Thanks for joining us, I hope you have fun. And if you do learn something, I hope it's painless. These videos are more about the Arduino-based control we developed and not so much about the actual machine being controlled. But seeing that machine will help you understand the design and function of the control. So buckle up, we'll start with a 35,000 foot 600 knot flyover of the thrilling world of plexiglass line benders. Our flagship product uses pieces of acrylic sheet which everyone calls plexiglass and those pieces need to have multiple perfect bends like you see here or we don't really have a product. These are some shots of the parts that we fabricate for our product line. We went through a lot of experimentation to get those nice bends which we didn't really expect because it is conceptually very simple to bend plexiglass. You just heat it, fold it, and hold it. I mean really, how hard can it be? But as with all things engineering, it's all about the details. Notice how many qualifiers crop up in this deeper dive into the process. When you clamp your workpiece into the machine, you need to make sure it is in exactly the right place. Then, as you heat it, you need to know how much energy you're applying. It has to be consistent from bend to bend. And you need to place it in exactly the right area for the exact right amount of time. Then, at exactly the right time, when you turn off the heat, you simultaneously bend the workpiece to exactly the right angle to get the part you want. After that, you want to hold it there for another precise amount of time that is different from the first amount of time until the acrylic freezes into that shape. Getting each of those variables right time after time is the key to consistent perfect results and that is hard to do if a human is controlling all those variables. It's simply not something that we're good at. Let's shift gears while I show you how a line bender works so this will all make more sense. The chassis consists of a flat rigid base large enough to accommodate your biggest planned workpiece. I typically use a multiply cabinet grade 3 quarter inch plywood and I'll double it up for more stability. And of course you'll need at least one folding arm to get a controlled bend. This machine has two because I, I have two hands. Just something to think about. Here's a closer shot of the folding arm in the raised position. It doesn't have a workpiece in it just so you can see the moving parts more clearly. At this setting it would obviously create about a 45 degree bend in your workpiece. And notice the stop in the background, which you can see more clearly here. The stop is what gives you the correct angle on your bend time after time, and some of the most important parts on it are the catch, which you want to include so you don't have to hold the arm up yourself while the workpiece cools. You want to be able to clamp it firmly at whatever angle you set because it is adjustable. This is a 90. And then again here you see it's set at the 45 degree angle. Of course none of this matters if you can't heat the plexiglass exactly where you want to bend it. How do we do that? The most important part? A nichrome wire of the right gauge to give us about 6.5 watts per linear inch of wire. That's a really good starting point to bend 8th inch or 3 millimeter plexiglass. To support and anchor the wire run it through the notch of a couple of straight blade screws as shown here. There's another guide like this on the other end of the wire. Here's a very important part of the setup, a spring to maintain tension on the nichrome as it heats up. The wire in this bender will grow almost a half inch in length as it comes up to temp. And you need to keep the wire stretched tight so it doesn't curl up out of its track and touch something you don't want to burn. Don't ask me how I know that, but do not skip this part. Likewise, there needs to be a heat shield to protect other parts of the bender. I recommend aluminum extrusions that you can find at most hardware stores. And finally, some way to get power to the nichrome. A big alligator clip works surprisingly well for this. Speaking of power, you will need a power supply. I recommend one of the many cost-effective DC power supplies used for projects like these. This is a 12-volt power supply. For the length of nichrome wire in this bender, which is about 20 inches, at 12 volts, you will easily consume 15 amps per wire. 
So make sure to choose your power supply and the wiring you run from it accordingly. That's a pretty good amount of power. You'll need a way to hold the workpiece down. While you can do that by hand, I like to use a clamp and I'm using a vice grip 18SP here with a clamp pad on the workpiece to distribute the pressure evenly. And finally, perhaps most important of all, you will need a timer. This is important because acrylic sheet will catch fire and it will burn enthusiastically. But before it burns, it will boil, which can ruin your part as well. If you don't heat it long enough, your part won't bend correctly or it will build up internal stresses. If you don't cool it long enough, your part will spring back out of the shape you want. This is really the most important part of your bender. Really, the only step not given to problems is clamping the workpiece to the bender. All the other steps can lead to anything from mild frustration to sheer terror. We knew that automating the process would help address most or all of these issues, so we developed an Arduino-based controller to do just that. Be sure to join us for part two of our video series, where we'll describe the components needed for an inexpensive, simple, but effective automation controller. See you then.